Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The video game cloud streaming industry is getting shaken up as NVIDIA loses more big names and Microsoft readies its market killer. Netflix has released its first quarter fiscal year results for 2020 and revealed some unusual coronavirus impacts. Microsoft answers once and for all, should there be one or two spaces after a period? Apple is preparing to develop its own processors for Mac computers to be rolled out as early as next year. Drones will be used to carry medical supplies to the Isle of Wight. And the Pentagon says the video of UFOs that were leaked in 2017 are real. Stick around, the full details in this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. The success of a video game cloud streaming service is all based on content, where you can and can't get your favorite games. The industry is getting a shakedown as NVIDIA's GeForce game streaming service has lost four game, big name game publishers, with Xbox Game Studios, Warner Bros, Codemasters, and Clay Entertainment pulling their titles by the end of the week. This comes as Microsoft prepares to launch its own game streaming service, Project X Cloud and high ending streaming's company Blade launches a lower priced version of its shadow streaming service. With competitors PlayStation Now and Google Stadia also chasing streaming customers and Apple pushing its walled garden game system, the market is entering a new era of competition similar to the movie and TV streaming market a few years ago. The loss of Xbox and Warner Bros. is significant, yet buried in an announcement that NVIDIA had signed up Ubisoft, whose titles include Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, and the Tom Clancy series for GeForce. It painted the changes as an opportunity to refine our library, and stressed that 30 of the top 40 most played games on Steam already stream on GeForce Now. Gamers pay NVIDIA $5 a month for now to run games they have already bought at a far higher performance level and speed than their devices can manage. NVIDIA runs its own copies of the games on its high-end servers, takes input from people's controllers, processes it, and then streams video back to the user. While they may seem like overkill, it means ordinary gamers can compete with those on high-end gaming machines, which cost thousands of dollars. With even a microse uh, microsecond meaning the difference between winning and losing, it is something many are prepared to pay for. But, as with TV and movie streaming services, content is everything and so there is a tussle going on between game developers and operators of streaming services. Google launched its Stadia service with plenty of fanfare a year ago but has so far disappointed gamers because of its limited selection of games and compatibility issues. It does offer the best resolution at 4K and charges $10 a month, though we, as we learned last week, you can sign up for a pro account right now to receive it for free for two months. PlayStation Now requires you to have a PlayStation and works only with games that run on the platform, although they are pretty extensive and also cost $10 a month. Shadow offers a higher-end service that costs $25 a month and from next month will offer a lower cost but lower powered $12 a month option. As for Microsoft's upcoming Project X Cloud service, due to launch anytime soon, it won't require users to own an Xbox and pricing has yet to be announced. Having released its first quarter fiscal year results for 2020, Netflix, Netflix has revealed some unusual coronavirus impacts. Made most plain in its Form 10-Q, Netflix said, the COVID-19 pandemic has also led to an increase in our net paid membership additions relative to our quarterly forecast and historic trends. Indeed, the company reported 15.5 million new subscribers in the quarter for a total of 182.86 million almost double recent quarter subscri subscription growth, but the filling mourns the surge may not be indicative of results for future periods. CEO Reed Hastings' letter to shareholders opens with, In our 20-plus year history, we have never seen a future more uncertain or unsettling, and goes on to explain that onboarding a rush of new users has actually damaged Netflix's average revenue per user. The CEO also explained that the pandemic will impact the streamer's pipeline of new shows because most film crews worldwide have had to stop working, although animators were quickly back at work and writers mostly just kept writing. Revenue for the quarter was uh, US 
$7 billion in operating income hit $958 million, both the best results the company has achieved in recent history. And that's after taking into account the strength of the U.S. dollar, which reduces the value of subscriptions in other nations. Hastings also wrote that Netflix's investment in caching uh, systems appears to have paid off, both in terms of user experience and letting it respond to the government request to reduce its impact on networks. The company has also blogged about its introduction of support for TLS 1.3, which means it can do a full handshake with a device with one round trip, or sometimes without a round trip at all. That translates into faster starts for streams and less traffic on networks. Subscribers ought not to expect more new features at this time. Hastings' letter added that while Netflix, Netflix devs are now working from home and that transition has gone well, they have temporarily reduced the number of product innovations while continuing to, continuing to release features they believe will add meaningful value for members, such as improved parental controls. With the advent of word processors, we saw a great debate take shape. Should you enter a single space or a double space after a period? The double space was a holdover from the days of the typewriter, and even now some people still do it. If you're one of them, you might want to prepare yourself for a certain update that's on the way to Microsoft Word. Microsoft has decided to drop the mic, siding with those who prefer a single space, as test builds of Microsoft Word now treat a double space after a period as a typo, when you allow the word processor to correct the error, it, it'll change it to a single space automatically. According to The Verge, while this feature is only in testing for now, it won't be long before it rolls out to the entire word using audience on desktop. The good news, however, is that you won't be stuck forever looking at those error lines underneath your double spaces if you don't want to. In a statement to The Verge, Microsoft's partner, director of program management, Kurt Gregerson, said that the double spaces of the world of sorry the double spaces of the world the double spacers of the world will be able to ignore the error flag and continue overusing their space bar if they so choose gregerson said as the crux of the great spacing debate we know this is a stylistic choice that may not be a preference for all writers which is why we continue to test with users and enable these suggestions to be easily accepted ignored or flat out dismissed we wanted to know how the free alternative LibreOffice was leaning. In the LibreOffice community forum, user Shankapluza calls two spaces needless extra work, saying if you had to take two breaths for every one, it'd be a tad laboring, no? And designer and typographer Hank C. Meerhoff says, in any part of the European mainland, mainland, it was never done or abandoned over 50 years ago. Double spaces will come back to bite you in some form. As it turns out, LibreOffice already defaults to to change double spaces into single spaces and has for the past several versions at least. Though as Pierre Yev Samian points out, it can be changed in the Tools, Autocorrect, Autocorrect Options menu on the Options tab by checking on Ignore Double Spaces. So there you have it. Microsoft isn't quite pushing out the double spaces yet, but they're following LibreOffice's lead and it feels like a big win for the single spacers. Expect to see this feature land in Microsoft Word in the months ahead. We've got to take a quick break. The Crypto Corner and more of this week's top tech news stories are coming up, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Crypto Corner. I hope you're all well and staying safe and also hope that last week's corner was of use to you where we spoke about jobs and the big opportunities in the blockchain industry in regards to programming and coding. I forgot to mention one website which I used to learn Python which is called hackerrank.com. That's H-A-C-K-E-R-R-A-N-K.com which gives you every day a uh, little task to achieve and um, that's how I learned uh, quite nicely to learn in, uh, in Python, and it's free. So give it a try. Another thing that I'd like to mention is it's currently tax season, and I encourage you to take care of those uh, taxes because local authorities around the world are starting to work together with local exchanges, and so they will have most likely your details already in regards to how many cryptos you have and so on. Um, there are plenty of websites that you can use um, 
and um, most and they're very uh, very good in price also so they're it's fairly cheap to use them and um, they are clever in the sense that they also give you advice when to add um, or when to change your position of your cryptocurrencies in regards to uh, safe taxes so make use of those websites um, they will be of use uh, to you later on uh, to the news, uh, market uh, cap of our industry has not really changed substantially since last week. We're hovering around 225 billion US dollars with Bitcoin having a market share of uh, 64%. Uh, big dates that are coming up uh, soon in uh, Shelly, which is from Cardano, a new development which focuses on decentralization has been started uh, this week. So they mined the first uh, Genesis block this week, but you, you, it's not yet open for the public. And for the, they're saying it will be open for the public in May or June. But that's an important development for Cardano. For Ethereum, they're saying that the Ethereum 2.0 will come in July. Remains to be seen because they have changed the dates already many times, but that's what they're currently saying. And then the big one is uh, Bitcoin halvening, which is uh, coming in around two weeks. Um, now, a lot of people are saying that it will have a big impact on prices. Others are saying that it will have no impact on prices. The history is telling us that it will not have a big impact on prices immediately. That comes at a later stage. Um, but um, to explain what halven the halvening means is currently every 10 minutes, around every 10 minutes, Bitcoin issues 12 and a half Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain issues 12 and a half Bitcoin to the miners, and that will be halved. So from May or two weeks onwards for the next four years, the miners will receive only 6.25 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. So the inflation of the Bitcoin blockchain will be reduced by, by half. And that's why it's called halvening. Other news. It's uh, in regards to DeFi, so decentralized, uh, decentralized finance, which is to explain centralized finance is CeFi, which is banks, where you have got a middle person, where you've got a company that you can call um, to, to talk to somebody. DeFi is just based on mathematics and codes. <clears throat> and that's getting very popular and it's really interesting. So if you have got some time, go into DeFi uh, of any cryptocurrency, the development has been tremendous. It's still in test phase, so don't invest any money there or any substantial money, but um, it's interesting. And um, uh, Bitfinex, which is the owner or the, the sister company of, of Tether, which is a stable coin, <clears throat> they developed uh, a token which is called the P token, which makes it possible to exchange funds between or assets between two, two de decentralized exchanges or exchanges. That is coming, which is an interesting development. Then Coinbase launched also an Oracle. Why is what was an Oracle is um, uh, a tool that tells you a specific value at a specific time. Um, for example, the price of, of Bitcoin. Um, as you know, there are probably over 400, 500 exchanges that are trading in, in Bitcoin. And they all have a different price. I mean, it's a minimal difference, but what happens if there's a crash? Then the difference between those exchanges will be substantial. And that is of importance for, for example, these DeFi uh, platforms. Which price should they use if they have to liquidate a posi po uh, position? And for that, they're de currently developing Oracles and uh, uh, Coinbase just launched uh, a price Oracle and uh, that will be live, uh, or is already live. And um, uh, next is the IOTA, IOTA Foundation took a decision to change their um, smart contracts uh, uh, idea. Uh, they initially had that in, a, in, the, in the base layer and they're ch moving that now to uh, layer two, uh, as a layer two fund, uh, solution. So it's like the lightning network to Bitcoin. It's not part of the, the base uh, 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 cryptocurrency. It's a level higher. So that is a decision that they took. Let's see if that uh, comes because it's not the first time that they changed that. 
And um, yeah, that's, that's it uh, for me. Um, so I wish you a great week. We'll see, I hope to see you next week. And um, with this, back to the studio. Thank you, Robert. Just a reminder that we are not providing financial advice, but only sharing what's happening in the cryptocurrency market. Always remember that the cryptocurrency markets are ever changing and always volatile. So you should only spend what you can afford to lose. Now back to Becca in the newsroom. Thank you, Ravi. Until now, Apple has been using Intel processors but according to a Bloomberg report, the company is now preparing to develop its own processors for Mac computers, which could be rolled out as early as next year. Apple is said to be working on three different processors that are based on the A14 chip that will power the next iPhone. According to the report, the first of these new Apple-made chips is expected to be much faster than that of an iPhone's and will arrive in a new computer next year. In taking this step, Apple is likely to be slowly moving towards ditching its dependence on Intel chips altogether. Apple's partner for iPhone and iPad processors, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., will develop the new Mac chips. The components will be based on the 5 nanometer production technique, the same size Apple will use in the next iPhones and iPad Pros. Details are thin at the moment, but we'll, be able, we'll sure be able to let you know more as the specifications are announced. The UK government has announced that drones will be used to carry medical supplies from Hampshire to the Isle of Wight. A planned trial of the technology began this week. In March, the government announced funding for drone tests and a new air traffic control system. But Grant Shapps, Secretary of State for Transport, said there was an urgent need for the trial to begin sooner than planned. Ferry crossings to the Isle of Wight are currently reduced due to the spread of COVID-19. An unmanned aerial vehicle can make the crossing to the Isle of Wight in about 10 minutes. The government expects about four flights per day to be made, depending on the needs of the United Kingdom National Health Service. A spokeswoman told the BBC that the first flights would carry personal protective equipment. However, in future, the drone could deliver the time-critical supplies such as blood and organs. The trial will use a gasoline-fueled Wind Racer's ultra-fixed-wing drone, capable of carrying a 100-kilogram payload for up to 1,000 kilometers. The Department for Transport said the drone would fly autonomously along a fixed route between Lee on the Solent in Hampshire and Binstead on the Isle of Wight. Two safety pilots, one at each airfield, will oversee each flight. A spokeswoman told the BBC that the flight would take around 10 minutes, significantly reducing de delivery times between the Isle of Wight and mainland. After goods have been dropped off at the airfield, they will be delivered to St. Mary's Hospital on the Isle of Wight by road. Because this is all happening so, happening so quickly, an unmanned traffic management system cannot be put in place in time, though it will be pursued for the long term. So for now, rather than integrating the drone with regular air traffic, a temporary danger area is being set up for 90 days to separate the drone from other aircraft. The Pentagon says it can explain three previously leaked videos of supposed UFOs, and the explanation is simple. They're real, and they're still a total mystery. The U.S. government declassified three top-secret videos of unexplained aerial phenomena on Monday, confirming that clips that first surfaced in 2017 are legitimate. That's not to say that the UFOs are not of this world, but that the Pentagon is unable to identify the objects seen flying in the videos. Word wizards are making the connection. Unidentified, flying objects, UFOs. The U.S. Navy has officially released the footage. Pentagon spokesperson Sue Gao said on Monday, that this is to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage that has been circulating was real or whether or not there is more to the videos. She said, after a thorough review, the department has determined that the authorized release of these unclassified videos does not reveal any sensitive capabilities or systems and does not impinge on any subsequent investigations of military airspace incursions by unidentified aerial phenomena. In other words, the objects are not theirs. The, announcements, the announcement is more vindication for Tom DeLong, the Blink-182 band member and alien enthusiast who released the videos to the New York Times in 2017 through his UFO research organization to the STARS Academy of Arts and Science. While the U.S. Navy didn't acknowledge the videos when they first serviced in 2017, Joe Grandisher, spokesperson for the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Information Warfare, confirmed they are real in an interview with CNN last September 
saying the Navy designates the objects uh, contained in these videos as un unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAPS. Grad uh, Gradisher said at the time that transparency around the sightings was important so that pilots won't feel ashamed to report something that could be dangerous. For many years, our aviators didn't report these incursions because of the stigma attached to previous technology and theories about what may or may not be in those videos. All three videos are now available through the Pentagon's reading room. The Pentagon did not release any additional footage or content along with the three clips, but it has stoked a flurry of excitement among UFO enthusiasts with its simple acknowledgement that the videos are legitimate. The truth is out there. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5 TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patron.com slash category5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.